In the world of comic book heroes, where extraordinary abilities and awe-inspiring adventures are the norm, there exists a character who embodies the essence of invincibility. He's a beacon of power and resilience with the fascinating intricacies of superhero life. We're talking about Mark Grayson, better known as Invincible. While Mark's origin story is etched in the books of superhero lore, today we delve deeper and learn about his existence. We'll explore the remarkable physiology that makes him a great force. From his astounding powers to the peculiar weaknesses that set him apart, we're about to dissect the anatomy of Invincible. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Who is Invincible? Is he a human or a Viltrumite? Invincible, aka Mark Grayson, a blend of earthly genetics and extraterrestrial might. Mark's dad, Nolan Grayson, is the real dad, a Viltrumite, part of a powerful alien race. On the other side, we've got his mom, an ordinary human. Now, when Mark was just a kiddo of seven, his dad spilled the bean. He revealed their intergalactic roots, how Viltrumites were like peaceful supermen, and how one day Mark would sprout some superpowers too, which led to Mark eagerly waiting every day for his superhero powers. Later in his high school senior year, while Mark was working at a part-time gig, it finally happened. He sends a trash bag soaring through the sky. And the next thing we know, it is time for a superhero outfit. And of course, a cool name. Dad's pal Art fixed the first problem in a jiffy. He quickly made up a superhero outfit. And as far as the name was concerned, Mark got that covered too. After an incident at his school, you know, the ones that make you visit the principal's office. Well, thanks to the principal's remark, he named himself Invincible. Mark is the ultimate Viltrumite human mashup. He has got the best of both worlds. Humans and Viltrumites share enough biology for Mark to tap into that potent Viltrumite potential. That Viltrumite heritage coursing through him makes him a great power. Does he have the ability of interstellar travel? Now, interstellar travel is like the past to travel anywhere in space. It's the ability to zoom through space, venturing where no regular human could survive without a spacesuit or some nifty tech. Our main man, Invincible, wasn't just a mere mortal. He's got this Viltrumite lineage that lets him party hard in the cosmos without any need for a fancy gadget. He can survive, move, fly, and kick in outer space without breaking a sweat. He can be on every asteroid, moon, and planet he wishes. Mark Grayson's Lung Capacity Can he breathe in outer space? Now, we all know how important breathing is. It is that thing that keeps us alive and running. But for Mark, it's not as simple as for us humans. Inhale and exhale and you're done. Nope. It's a little different for him, obviously, because he's a superhero. A superhero with a breathing superpower. Thanks to this Viltrumite lineage, his endurance is way above average. He's tough enough to take hits from the ever-powerful Thrag. Ever seen someone survive disembowelment? Well, Mark has survived that. Can he breathe in space, which technically is a no-breathing zone? No, he cannot. But he can survive in space without breathing, due to his huge lung capacity that helps him hold his breath for a long, long time. You think it's tough holding your breath in the pool? Mark can hold his for weeks. No! Invincible's body can survive attack of a nuclear bomb. You know how sometimes you play with action figures and make them survive crazy stunts? Well, Mark does that for real. Due to his ancestry, he's basically walking around with a damage-free sticker on his super suit. Bullets? They bounce off of him like rubber balls off a wall. He is the ultimate action movie star, dodging bullets Matrix style, without a single scratch. Once a nuclear bomb exploded in his face, but it was probably like a sneeze to him, considering he brushed it off with a casual, is that all you got? Mark's even been in the middle of a few hydrogen bombs and he just shrugged it off with minimal injuries. Only something nearly as powerful as himself can pierce his body, nothing else. How does his power increase? You might think all heroes just wake up, stretch, and are good to go for the day with their powers, but that's not the case for all of them, at least not for our boy Invincible. Nope, his powers are just handed to him on a silver platter. Sure, they're in his DNA, but they've got a base level. So if he wants to hang with the big league of heroes and give the baddies a tough time, he's got to hit the gym. It's a never-ending superhero workout routine to up the ante and keep pace with his fellow caped crusaders and, more importantly, those villains who don't play very nice. 
Mark has to sweat it out. Think of it as leveling up your favorite video game character, but instead of pushing buttons, you're lifting weights and doing squats. Mark Grayson's surprising weakness of a virus. Mark, the guy who can survive nuclear blasts and laugh in the face of danger, is vulnerable to the Scourge virus. It's a nasty little bug that's the kryptonite to Mark's superpowers. So once, Mark was having a showdown with Alan in space. There's this whole debate about releasing the Scourge virus into the atmosphere. Mark, being the good guy that he is, isn't thrilled about this plan. In the heat of the argument, his buddy Oliver decides to make things interesting. They start a tug of war with the virus dispenser, and eventually, the virus gets released right into Mark's face. Mark's in trouble, and it's not just a mild flu. His eyes and nose start bleeding, and he's in rough shape. He's quarantined into Viltrumite worship, and let's just say it's not a five-star hotel. Mark's powers are, well, not so super anymore. He throws a punch at Alan breaks his own arm and realizes that the Scourge virus has seriously weakened him. He goes through surgery and Cecil drops the bomb. You may never get your powers back. Mark feels helpless and frustrated. But just when things seem bleak, there's a twist in this tale. Mark discovers, in the most unexpected way, that his powers are back. Does he have a healing ability? Healing ability, that one factor which works like a magic potion for superheroes. His genes make him immune to all diseases, disorders, and those little imperfections that bug us humans. He can heal and regenerate from injuries. Depending on how rough the battle gets, his healing speed varies. After a showdown with his dad, Nolan, aka Omni-Man, Mark bounced back in just two weeks. But when he tangled with the Viltrumites on Thraxa, it took him a whole month to make a full recovery. During his first encounter with Conquest just three days later, he was hobbling around with bruises and crutches. But give it a few months and he's all good. In his second brawl with Conquest, things got seriously messy. Mark was disemboweled and it took him a few months to bounce back from that gruesome injury. Like all Viltrumites, he's a master of adaptation, and his regenerative powers kick in like a healing symphony. What made Mark Grayson's ears bleed and put his life in danger? We know that Mark can fly. He soars through the skies looking all cool and superhero-like. But his flight is all about balance, and it's as delicate as a house of cards. The secret to Mark's flight is hidden in his inner years. There's a complex balancing system. Anything that messes with it can be bad news for Mark. Now, I'm not talking about loud sounds. It's those pitch pulses that can be troublemakers. When these pitch pulses come into play and throw Mark's inner ear system off kilter, it's like a switch flips in his ears, and the result? Blood starts trickling out of his ears. And what's even more nail-biting is that if Mark's ears stay in this chaotic state for too long, it could be lights out for our hero. It's like having the off button for flight hidden in the most sensitive part of your body. But it's not just Mark who has to worry about this. Other Viltrumites might have the same ear-tastic vulnerability. It's like the universe's way of reminding superheroes that even with all their incredible powers, they're not invincible. Is he the fastest man alive? When it comes to speed, this guy isn't just quick, he's superhero fast. Mark can move faster than a speeding bullet, literally. Remember that classic phrase, faster than a speeding train? Well, Mark takes it to a whole new level. He can whisk someone from the United States all the way to Antarctica in just a few seconds. It's like teleporting, but without the sci-fi gadgets. And when it comes to reaching orbit, it's no problem for Mark. In just a matter of minutes, he can go from ground zero to the edge of our world. But it's not just about raw speed, it's about reflexes too. So whether it's getting somewhere in the blink of an eye, jetting to space for a quick snack, or making Matrix-style dodges look like child's play, Mark Grayson's got speed to spare. He might not be the Flash, but he's definitely one of the fastest folks around in the superhero universe. Which comic book is his favorite? Above everything else, there is a much relatable side of Mark Grayson, his love for comic books. Mark's not just any casual reader, he's a bona fide comic book fanboy. It's like he's one of us, living the dream. He'd swing by his local comic book shop, have chats with the owner, and even geek out in line for signed editions. His favorite comic book character? That's Science Dog, a clever, gadget-loving canine who knows how to save the day. The creators, Robert Kirkman and Corey Walker, 
slyly tucked Science Dog into Invincible, with hopes of giving him his own spotlight later on. Science Dog's story is all about an ordinary pup turned future genius with jetpacks and goggles. But Seance Dog? The version shown in the Amazon Prime series has a mythical twist. Don't worry though, Mark's comic book fan status remains intact. He's still rocking the posters, collecting the paraphernalia, and diving into those meta-commentary moments that make us all feel like kindred spirits with our beloved hero. It's like a comic book exception. Does he have any love interest? And can he reproduce? When it comes to Mark Grayson's love life, there's a special someone who's captured his heart. Adam Eve. Samantha Wilkins, the woman behind the Adam Eve mask, is not just any hero. She's got powers that can rearrange matter at the molecular level. I'm talking light constructs, transmutation wizardry, flight, and instant regeneration. She's a powerhouse. Now, let's rewind a bit. Mark and Eve, they go way back. High school friends, the whole deal. But you know what they say, sometimes the best relationships start with a friendship. There was always this magnetic romantic pull between them, like they were two sides of the same superpowered coin. It was inevitable and eventually they became more than just crime-fighting partners. They took the plunge, got married, in some order, and of course added a little one to their superhero family. They have a daughter, Tara Grayson. Tara's got some serious transmutation powers, thanks to her mom, and she's a bundle of joy, even though her entrance into the world was a tad dramatic with a leg dismembering surgery. Mark and Eve are there for every step of the way. As Tara grows, the Grayson family bonds. They named her Tara, their own little piece of earth. But the family story doesn't end there. Mark also has a son, Marcus Murphy. He's the son of the original Invincible, Mark Grayson, and Velichermite, Anissa. Anissa, in her own unique way, well, let's just say she took things into her own hands. This eventually landed her a son. She had a change of heart, married a human man, and kept her son away from Mark for a while. But eventually, Marcus met his true father. And the rest, as they say, is superhero history. And that, my friends, is the tale of love and superhero family drama in the life of Mark Grayson. Is he immortal? Mark Grayson, the man of the hour, has had his fair share of close calls and moments that made the world think he was done for, kaput. But the truth about his immortality, or lack thereof, isn't as simple as it seems. There was that one time when the whole world watched in shock and disbelief as news reporters broadcasted Mark's apparent demise. It all started with Mark and Zendale trying to sort out the world's problems. Dinosaurus, with his eco-conscious but rather ruthless approach, was causing all kinds of mayhem, and he didn't want to see any other way out but to trigger some major disasters. It was a heart-pounding race against time, with Mark trying to defuse bombs and Dinosaurus unleashing chaos. Then, as Mark closed in on the villain, the unthinkable happened. Dinosaurus launched a brutal attack, seemingly ending Mark's heroic journey on live television. It was a moment of shock and horror for the world. But that's the thing about Mark. He's not your average superhero. In the midst of this apparent tragedy, Mark found himself in a place that wasn't quite the afterlife. He met a mysterious voice, someone who knew his deepest secrets and assured him that things weren't what they seemed. As it turned out, Mark wasn't dead, at least not in the traditional sense. The voice revealed that it had disconnected Mark's mind from his body, putting him into a coma. It all came down to Mark's unique physiology and his inner ear. A certain frequency had induced this coma, making the world believe he was gone. But here's the twist. Dinosaurus, the eco-villain behind it all, had a grand plan. He created a Mark clone to fool everyone into thinking the worst had happened. The clone met a gruesome end on live television, a clever ruse to absolve Mark of the blame for the disasters. Upon waking up, Mark confronted Dinosaurus, challenging his morally questionable actions. Dinosaurus realized the error of his ways and released Mark from the coma. But there was no easy redemption here. Mark and Dinosaurus disagreed fundamentally on how to save the world. Dinosaurus had to face the consequences of his actions. 
There was another time when Mark, along with Adam Eve, faced the terrifying Thrag in a battle that nearly cost them their lives. Thrag showed no mercy, pummeling them to the brink of death. It seemed like the end for Mark, but Adam Eve's quick thinking and powers saved them from certain doom. Mark's near-death experiences remind us that, while he may not be immortal in the traditional sense, his resilience, determination, and unique Viltrumite physiology keep him coming back from the brink, ready to face the next challenge head-on. Marvelous Verdict as we conclude our exploration of Mark Grayson's anatomy, we've journeyed through the extraordinary, delving into the DNA of a superhero. Mark is more than just a character. He's a testament to the limitless imagination and creativity of the comic book world. From his ability to withstand nuclear blasts, to the unique inner workings of the ears that allow him to fly, Mark Grayson is a captivating study of the complexities of superhuman physiology, and we've learned that even the seemingly invulnerable have their moments of vulnerability, reminding us that every hero has their kryptonite. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.